My name is Bill Marler. I'm a food safety lawyer uh, based on Bay Ridge Island, Washington, and uh, the publisher of Food Safety News. The CDC uh, and uh, the USDA have announced that there are now 34 people sickened. Um, all of those folks have been hospitalized. There have been two deaths, one in Illinois and one in New Jersey. Um, it's impacted 13 states, all sort of west of the Mississippi. And it's been linked to boar's head meat. Um, they have had a positive listeria sample in some liverwurst, which was one of the six different kinds of products that have been recalled. Um, they they have not announced, public health has not announced whether that or not that uh, positive sample from the food product is a genetic match to the 20, uh, or excuse me, 34 people who've been sickened. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's certainly, that's going to be the presumption. The process, uh, whether it's listeria or E. coli or salmonella, um, you know, when somebody's sick, listeria, people are so sick, they're usually hospitalized and they're getting uh, either uh, a positive culture out of their blood or sometimes out of their spinal fluid because listeria cause, uh, in humans uh, will cause meningitis, which is the the big risk and why, you know, so many people uh, are sickened and why, unfortunately, you know, some people die. All of these uh, tests that are positive for listeria have gone through a process called whole genome sequencing. So the listeria that's been found in the blood, that's been found in the spinal fluid, all 34 of these people have the exactly the same listeria. And that really tells you that they ate a common product. And what gets a little funny in these uh, cases uh, involving deli meat, and you'll, you will also see recently that some delis have shut down and you know they're doing a deep cleaning because when that boar's head meat comes into the deli, you know it's got it's contaminated with listeria. It can spread to other food products in that deli counter. So yeah, that's that's the other. Sometimes it's a confounding issue. Sometimes in these deli cases where you know some people eat cheese, some people eat you know bratwurst, some people eat ham, and so there doesn't seem to be a common denominator. Um, because there's cross-contamination in the deli counter. Here, at least, uh, the common denominator appears to be there was boar's head product in a lot of these delis, and people recalled consuming it, and now they have a positive sample. So, you know, and frankly, I would expect that that sample is going to be positive and be a genetic match, but frankly, even if it's not, it doesn't mean that it's not the boar's head product that caused people to get sick. Um, you know, the one sort of frightening thing about listeria is it has an incubation period, so between ingestion and onset of illness, from three to 70 days. So even though we're now knowing about this outbreak that's really only been occurring in the last couple of months, you know, people who consumed that before the recall was announced, unfortunately, kind of have to wait and see. And so I think the public needs to be really aware, especially if you're, you know, suffering aches and pains and headaches, you know, get to the hospital as quickly as possible. We don't have a lot of detail about the people who were hospitalized. We know that, th that two people have died. Um, that's not necessarily uncommon. Usually you see about 10 to 15 percent of all culture positive cases in listeria outbreaks are deaths. Um, generally speaking, too, it's a, essentially 100% are hospitalized. Um, there's also a number of people who have less severe illnesses that might have a diarrheal illness or you know stomach cramps and whatnot for a, a week or so. They very seldom get tested. Uh, they're not sick enough to go to the hospital. Um, uh, stool cultures, for listeria are not that great, but you know if you get a you know a fulminant infection that gets into your bloodstream, gets into your spinal column, that's when they are testing. So, your the number of people who are sick with listeria is probably about ten times the number that we're actually being uh, told by the CDC, and that's because 
the people who the other people who are sick that other 10 times are people who had a diarrheal illness that didn't advance, you know, to a fulminant infection. If you bought meat from a deli counter anywhere that had boar's head meat in it, um, it's a good idea just to, you know, throw it out. There's a good adage in the business where when in doubt, throw it out. And, um, you know, I just, I frankly wouldn't take the risk unless you want to, you know, cook it thoroughly. Um, obviously, the, you know, not consuming the uh, the boar's head meat that's been recalled is certainly important. Also, too, you know, uh, you know, it's a good idea to clean, you know, your refrigerator in the areas that you may have had deli meat. And it's a good idea to do that, you know, sort of every, you know, once uh, every often, simply because listeria is really the only bacteria uh, that causes human disease that grows really well at refrigerator temperatures. So most of the issues you see with listeria are in cool, wet environments. You know, you see it happen with cheese, you see it happen with ice cream and deli meat and lettuce. Those are areas where uh, listeria can, you know, create a little space and they grow really well at temperatures that sort of retard the growth of other deadly pathogens like E. coli and salmonella. So listeria is, you know, really problematic in sort of the ready to eat uh, food products. And, you know, it can cause, you know, extensive outbreaks, very severe outbreaks. Um, you know, I was a consultant in uh, South Africa on the largest listeria outbreak that sickened over a thousand and killed 200 linked to a deli meat product uh, produced in South Africa. So, you know, these things, you know, can be, you know, pretty concerning and pretty deadly. One of the things that, uh, you know, to prevent future outbreaks is to, you know, ramp up your testing on uh, food contact surfaces, um, you know, cleaning equipment, you know, deli slicers, um, you know, uh, equipment that is producing ice cream or the 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 belts where lettuce is being processed, you know, listeria can get into little crevices into this machinery. And if not cleaned properly, um, they create a biofilm. That biofilm will slough off every once in a while. And that listeria will get into the product. And so, you know, thoroughly cleaning equipment, making sure the kind of equipment you have is cleanable and thoroughly cleanable. Testing food contact surfaces, you know, testing your, your plant to make sure listeria isn't being harbored there. But, you know, once listeria gets into a plant, it's really difficult to, you know, to get rid of. Um, and so that's why, you know, thorough cleaning, thorough testing is important. You know, in deli, delis, uh, you know, uh, you know, everybody likes to go to deli, everybody likes to get their fresh, you know, meat cut and things like that. It's really important that, you know, those deli counters in your grocery store or in delis or wherever they are, you know, that they, you know, thoroughly clean uh, those deli cases and their slicers and to pay attention to detail. Um, for consumers, you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, listeria is a really deadly pathogen. And if you're, you're very young, you're, you know, you're elderly, you're pregnant, um, you may think twice about, you know, uh, enjoying that liverwurst sandwich.